If anybody ever threw up. Not here. Do you feel like you might? Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today I'm joined by the legend, Trick Daddy Dollars. He's a platinum-selling artist with more than 20 years in the rap game, a bona fide hit maker, and arguably hip-hop's greatest chef. Trick Daddy, welcome to the show. It's long overdue. I appreciate you for having me. And then I know that you love your Cajun spices. How do you think you'll do today against the wings of death? I can do the spice thing, but not on the Mexican side, because like, the Mexicans got some different level hot stuff. Well, we have some different level hot stuff, too. You ready to get it going? Let's go. Okay. Just play, play. So there are a lot of rappers who get credit for their cooking skills, be it Action Bronson, Coolio, Master P, but the real ones know that Trick Daddy is the Bobby Flay in hip hop. Your Instagram stories, it's basically the best food show on the internet. Caution, macaroni and cheese, looking good. Step over here to the stove, got the lima beans, and bitch, I got my pots. I'm a Geechee. Geechee meaning my family is from Southeast South Carolina, close by the waters. And being that I was the second oldest of 11, I ended up not washing dishes or cleaning up as more, but doing the cooking. As somebody who now works with a certain level of swagger around the stove, what are your kitchen pet peeves when someone else steps into your kitchen? I don't know if I want you to know the little special thing that I put in my shrimp and grits. My main thing is if you're in my kitchen, you got to be a fine girl or you got to be my assistant and you cutting up onions and bell peppers. Why was your neighborhood growing up called pork and beans? It was called the poker beans because the color of the door was the same color as the poker bean cans. It was really the Liberty Square housing project. And then you have an excellent array of aprons. Which one's your favorite? My favorite apron is my apron I got made that said, bitch, I got my pots. Everybody know about this one in the South. Mm -hmm. Even though it's feel like you added something else on here. A little spicier than you were expecting? Yeah. So when an OG like you sits down in the seat, there's way too much to cover over just a short meal. So if you'll humor me, I'll just hit you with some burning questions that I've always been dying to ask you. The Shut Up marching band beat is one of the greatest slappers in history. What's the story behind that instrumental? The story behind the instrumental is the two high schools that I use are the most known high schools in the state of Florida, Miami Jackson Generals and Miami Northwestern Bulls. And you went to Northwestern. I didn't actually, I was supposed to go to Northwestern, I got in a little trouble and I had to move back down south where I went to South Ridge. Everybody stayed during halftime to see what new popular songs that the bands was gonna do. And so I got those two schools together in the historical Orange Bowl and shot this video weeks before the Orange Bowl was condemned. And then, you know, Slip and Slide Records, it always struck me as such a whimsical name for such a thugged out label. What's the story behind how the name came to be? Certain slangs in Miami, like snitches get stitches and, and slippers count. Slip and Slide Records, it stands for if you slip, we gonna slide. It then improved because when they first did it, Touche had a man with a jacket on, like, like this. Like, it was fooky booky. I mean, it was real fook. What do you have against Bugle Boy jeans? Bugle Boy jeans was more like for the preppy guys. Would you wear polos? I, I was rocking polo real, real big one time. And then polo, actually it's crazy because I sent one of the secretaries. I was like, I need you to get me a PR person, get in contact with polo. I don't want them to pay me. They don't have to endorse me. But all I want them to do is let me be able to order things that nobody else don't have or they don't have in store. Polo responded. No thank you, and we, we appreciate if you didn't even mention our name or something to that extent. How'd you take that? I wrote a new um, verse for the next album, and I was like, I used to be a polo kid until I thought of all the other stupid shit that I did. Nothing I took personal, because I never asked them to pay me to wear their clothes anyway. But if they go back to the numbers, when I was talking about this, their stocks went up, big time. It's getting harder and harder. That's how the show's designed. 
Yeah, it's getting hotter and hotter. So your album, Thug.com, came out in 1998, and according to the Pew Research Center, barely 40% of the adult population was even online back then, and the AOL homepage was just a collection of hyperlinks. Do you feel like you were ahead of your time with that title? I feel like, I feel like we slipped. You fucked up. I, we were supposed to make some of the internet money. We were supposed to make some, some Facebook money or some MySpace money at the time, some of that Google money. I went to prison at a young age. We watched as the prison system changed. And we went from cash and prison to using our ID card as the cash. Because you were online before most people were online. Right. It put a lot of knowledge in my head. Well, this is where we're going to be in years to come. Has the internet been good for rap or bad for rap? Both. So the rap game is so crowded and so congested now. Everybody want to sound alike. Nobody got a different style. Nobody got no story. My music was totally different from that. A lot of my music is visions. Thug.com was letting them know that I was a thug from the future because all the stuff that I talked about in that album still is happening right now, today. It's actually good. Whoever cooked the chicken know how to cook the chicken. So I want to stay on the subject of food because the trick daddy world, it doesn't end in the kitchen. Can you explain the hip hop world's love for Benihana? I always tell girls, that the reason why I, Benihana is, is popular in my, in my world, I always tell girls, this. If I meet a girl, I'll be like, what's up, baby? Take this out, I want to take you out to dinner. Can I take you out to a nice restaurant? Somewhere where they fix the food right in front of you? And she be like, what, Benihana's? I be like, no, Subway. He's so, so from there. There's just something about being able to sit down and cook the food in front of you. I know that you flirted with the idea of opening a restaurant here in Miami. Can you close your eyes and describe in vivid detail what the Trick Daddy restaurant looks like? Trick Daddy restaurant is called T Double D Delicious. Not too many tables because I want you to get it and go. I got collard greens with ham hocks, pigtail, and smoked neck bones in there. Macaroni and cheese, definitely. My drinks are what you might call in your hometown Arnold Palmer. Yeah, what do you call it? We call it the flop here. It's called the flop here. It's lemonade with the tea. The, the $5 poor man meal. What's in the $5 poor man meal? You get you three wings and a fry, a cheeseburger and a fry, a hamburger, a fry, and a soda or a hot dog, a fry and a soda, or a hot dog, a soda and some chips. And I will have special rate for all school teachers because I never think that school teachers, I just don't think that they get paid what they should get paid. Hammerjean. All right, Trick Daddy, well, we have a recurring segment on our show called Explain That Gram, where we do a deep dive on our guest's Instagram, pull interesting pictures that need more context. So I'll bust out the laptop, I'll show you the picture, and then you just tell me the bigger story. Does that sound good? Okay. Here we have a throwback pic with DJ Khaled. When you were running around the 305 with DJ Khaled before he was famous, did you see the DJ Khaled of today? The same person. High energy, very, very influential, very supportive. If something costs $5, he'll make you think it costs $5 million while telling you it costs the $5. I do a toy drive every year. I did it for 17 years. DJ Khaled and Pitbull are the only two constant people that donate to Trick Love the Kids Foundation and make sure the kids have a Christmas and back to school programs that I do every year for 17 years. So people always got something to say about DJ Khaled. Bad is the ones that got records that's not good enough for him to play. Best party ever with Scottie Pippen and Lil Wayne? Me, Scottie Pippen, and Lil Wayne all got the same birthday. Really? <laughs> yeah. At Club Live, the best club in the world, and they've always shown me love. And this was actually a time that it was supposed to be some type of feud between me and Baby at the time, and right. me and Wayne was even supposed to be speaking, and it was historical. That's one of my best birthdays in the last 20. Everything was good. The women were looking good and delicious, so everything came out all right. Sounds like a hell of a birthday party. You ready to move on, Trick Daddy? Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> my nose starting to tinkle a little. 
It said gluten free. When I first read it, I thought they was giving away gluten. I was like, hey, you want gluten? It's free here. <laughs> So you hail from Miami's Liberty City. It's a neighborhood on the north side that's produced more than its fair share of college football standouts and NFL superstars. The U's football program, it was so closely connected to Miami's hip hop scene at the time. What role did Trick Daddy play in all that? Where were you in that cloth? So I could say this without nobody getting in trouble. I endorsed a lot of them, took care of a lot of them, and I made a lot of money off of them. We played another team from another city or another state. Tell them to bring the bag. We bet in the house. Do you have any crazy Jeremy Shockey stories that you can share with us? Yeah, but I wouldn't. That's my main man. Me and Jeremy Shockey, we had some nice times together. I imagine, I imagine. One story, we went to the, uh, when the Marlins opened the baseball stadium, and we went down to the Clevelander, to the club in there. There was some bad girls in the pool. Me and uh, Jeremy Shockey, he was talking about the boys from the sixth floor, the, the song. That dorm rap song. The dorm rap song. With yeah. uh, with Greg Olson. I'm right. Like, yeah. We, me, me and Shock was talking about that. Did you like that song? I loved it. And I think G Reg, he had the hardest verse on there, too. G Reg, the girls give me head. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that one right there. Yeah. And then we was talking about that song, laughing, and we got some ones and we made it rain on the girls in the pool, and the, and the owner of the Marlins Stadium was like, you can't do that in here. I was like, okay, okay, okay. Who's a bigger Miami Heat fan? You or Lil Wayne? That's a crazy question. I'm Miami everything. It's Miami against everybody. I'm Miami everything. You can't melt Lil Wayne and pour him on me in a Miami Heat jersey. Soft spaghetti. I know this side of my jaw is This has actually got a nice flavor. This has got, this is like it got peppers in it. So you're one of the more enduring icons of Miami rap, and as we've talked about today, you're always repping 305 to the fullest, so I'd be remiss if I didn't get a Trick Daddy City Guide from you. What are your tips for having the best spring break in Miami? Having the best spring break in Miami. All the fellas, enjoy the beaches, but don't fall in love with my bitches. Don't come down here and act like you ain't got good sense because you know the original saying by Miami, come on vacation, leave on probation. Arrive alive and make sure you come on this side of the bridge before you can say I've been to Miami. What makes Miami strip clubs different from other strip clubs? We get bucket naked. They get bucket naked. They get butt naked in Miami. Is there an underrated food specialty that you can push me towards? You need to try conk. And a lot of people say conk is an aphrodisiac. That's, that's incorrect. That's a mind thing. There's a piston of the conk. The piston, which they say is the penis, but you have to get that straight out the shell with the conk. If you don't, it's not an aphrodisiac. yet, but conk is a delicatessen here now. Conk is $15, $16 a pound. Matter of fact, I got some in the trunk right now. I want to bought a case of conk. Valuable cargo, are you ready to move on? I know one thing, the water make it worse. Well, if you say it, it's the truth. Okay. <laughs> so this one it's is the bomb. bomb. Yeah, it is. Yes, it is. God damn. This here? Yeah. Watch your eyes. This is illegal. Yeah. God damn. Going for the water, even though you say it makes it worse. See? the whole. So in recent years, you've been pretty vocal about your opinions regarding the state of rap. What's one way that rap has changed for the better over the last 20 years and one way that it's changed for the worse? The way it's changed for the worse is nowadays, 
They either sound alike or they saying the same thing on every song. They still listen to, oh my God, hell. Yeah. My eyes watering. You look great. You look great. Oh <laughs> shit! Hell no! I let y'all boost me up to do this shit. Moody. <laughs> Man, this you don't. I'm gonna I'm 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 tell you something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hit me. This one here. Yeah. The next person you take on here, don't don't do this one. Find another one. I think that's good advice. I don't think this is a wing sauce. I think somebody made this for me. You think this is all an elaborate prank on Trick Daddy? Man. I don't know if the scratch, uh, I don't know if the cry. You've said that you appreciate this new generation of rappers in that they've solidified your place as the last of a dying breed. What did you mean by that? I respect them because they showed me how important I was to music. What's your take on Stitches? Do you take him seriously as a Miami rapper? Me and Stitches, we cool. As far as music, I only do music with people who are in my label because everybody I know want to be a rapper now. So if they think, oh, cause I speak, cause Trick speak to me, we cool. Hey Trick, let me get a feature. It's not that easy. I didn't have it that easy. You shouldn't have it that easy. What about Kodak Black? Free Kodak Black, I hope that he can get his head together and get some people around him that really care about him and so he can get him some money because there's a lot of money in the game for him because he's young right now and the young people are the ones that's buying the records. All right, Trey, this next one is Mad Dog 357 with number nine, Plutonium. <laughs> Lord, please help. If anybody ever threw up. Not here. Do you feel like you might? I the garbage, because I know you gave me some almond milk. Right. Well, we do have this big can here. If it hits you, all right? It should be big enough. So as we've touched on a bit today, you have some old school sensibilities, especially when it comes to hip hop, but you also seem like a guy who can change with the time. So what I wanna do is bounce some societal trends off of you that are bubbling up in 2018. I just want the Trick Daddy snap reaction. Does that sound good? Okay. What are your opinions of self-driving cars? Like, would you trust a self-driving Chevy Caprice? No way possible. The car is too heavy. It's not gonna stop when you want it, when you want to. I'm gonna have my, I'm gonna have to have me some invisible gas and brake pedals. I'm gonna be steady pressing gas and brakes. I just, I don't trust no, no, no car to just stop on its own because all computers malfunction. Do you think Instagram needs to free the nipple? Definitely. My, my, my thing is, I think that if women are willing to bear it all on Instagram, I think it should be an Instagram X. And I think they need to make me the CEO of it. All the women that want to show their body and bear it all, I don't think their pays need to be blocked, hacked, or nothing, as well as Facebook. And then eating ass has really picked up steam over the last couple years, and I know that you've been the general of Eat a Booty Gang for years, long right. before it was trendy. Do you still get down like that, or has it lost a little bit of its charm now that everyone's jumping on the bandwagon? Well, I don't know when the last time you actually bucked the girl up or, or bent her over to eat her eat her uh, her vagina, but there's about this much room that separates that from the ass. It's just, it's, it's manners. It's courteous. It, 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 it's like being raised right. When you walk in somebody's house, your mama taught you, speak. Just come by, you eating the pussy. Oh, how you doing, Miss Miss Parker? That's how it came about. And I noticed the reaction of the girls. It's like the birds and bees speech that my dad never gave me but should have. All right, Trick Daddy. <laughs> this is the last dab. We call it the last dab because it's tradition around here to put a little extra on oh, the last shit. wing. Did you make this up? Did, let's be we, honest with you. Yeah, 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 I'll always be honest with you. Okay, did, so I'm not the only one that's gonna put a little, look, look, I got shit on there already. Yeah, there's, there's, there's shit on there already. There's shit on there already. But you don't have to if you don't want to. 
ain't no, I ain't there no way God ain't brought me this far to drop me off right here. Respect. Respect. <laughs> God damn it. The old peel and eat. Oh my God. Tastes like the middle of a pepper. Mm hmm. Oh, how you doing, Miss Parker? Miss, Miss Parker? Oh, how you doing, Miss Parker? <laughs> this is crazy. All right, Trick Daddy, here we are at the top of Spice Mountain, legs shaky, exhausted, mouths on fire, and you're a person who's always said it how you think it, told it how you lived it, so I just have one more question for you because we all need to know. Does Trick Daddy still love the kids? If the children are our future, don't they deserve to have their laughs? Don't they deserve to have pictures? Nobody have photo albums no more of their kids. A lot of my concerts, I'd be like, I got $100 for the first girl who showed me their kid on their screensaver. I always tell them that the kids are our future and we have to pay attention to our kids, not trying to be their friends, no staying up late, they be able to grab their phone and go in it anytime they want to, be able to walk in their classroom and check with their teacher anytime they want to, be able to whoop their ass like we got our ass whooped. Those old ass whooping days need to come back into play, and I think the world would be a better place. From your lips to God's ears, you heard it here first, and look at you, Trick Daddy, all the way through the gauntlet, taking out wings, taking out sauces, and didn't even puke in the industrial-sized garbage can, and that I respect, my dude. And now there's nothing left to do but roll out the red carpet for you. This camera, this camera, or this camera. Let the people know what you have going on in your life. I am the Daddy Dollars, the Dun Daughter of the Dunk Riders, the CEO and President of the Eaty Booty Gang, the 305 Representer. Y'all make sure y'all look out for season two of Love and Hip Hop Miami, the new album, Trick and Trina, TNT, in stores very soon. And ask your sister about me. And ladies, stop telling your kids that I am their uncle. I'm actually Uncle Step Daddy. I love you. How do you feel? Oh, man. Fuck the... <laughs> God damn, man. Yeah. Um, shot, you guys don't have any table for our intro? Hey, man, that shit don't make no sense, man. This shit right here, man, that shit started all everything right there. The bomb. What? Yeah, just like... That's a Polaroid? Yeah, bringing it back. Hey, what's going on, Hot Ones fans? It's Sean Evans, and you know what? I'm not going to beg for your subscription. If you're not subscribed, turn off the video. It's over. I want just my subscribers. Come here, come here. If you're subscribed to First We Feast, I just wanna say thank you, and that I appreciate you, that I love you, and I hope that you have a great day.